There really should be a sustainable fashion brand that's, that appeals to fashionable consumers. There really isn't one. I think I could do it. Typically when people think about fast fashion, they think of cheap or bad for the environment, and we are quite the opposite. I was making a clothing collaboration with Urban Outfitters, and I went to China to go work on it. When I got there, I got really depressed. Basically, the pollution is on a level that's kind of hard to understand. And I started doing research, and, and I figured out that fashion is, depending who you talk to, the second or third most polluting industry in the world. And I thought, you know, there really should be a sustainable fashion brand that's, that appeals to fashionable consumers. There really isn't one. I think I could do it. It was a lot of hard work and, and failing a lot and feeling like, God, how are we gonna make this thing take off? Um, and then you just keep showing up every day and working on it, working on it, and then eventually you start to see some gains. And then I started to notice like when we did take off, the business took off quickly. You know, we started probably seven years ago and we currently have, I think it's like 550 to 575 employees. So Franklin Monica asks, what are the important variables when hiring? The most important thing is understanding your stage of business. If you're a company with five people, you wanna get people that have experience working at companies with five people. It's a specific skill set, right? You have to be good at like doing lots of different things. And then as you get bigger, those sorts of people maybe don't work as well, they can work well to possibly they can grow, but a lot of times you need more specialized people, people that can do work in specific roles. The places in the company that I am least good at are the places where we need the most people. So Guven asked me what I do and don't do to have enough energy for a successful day. What I've really been trying lately is giving myself more space to think um, and more free time to just ponder. So whereas I used to have you know, uh, two calls set up on my ride to work. Like, I don't schedule calls in the morning. I use that time to just think and, and be by myself. I'm so much more mellow now than when I first started. I was, I was really tense and I would wake up at, you know, 6, 6.30, 7 and start working immediately. Like, when I opened my eyes, I began working. And now I realize that I don't need to, you know, be looking at every single detail all the time. So Christos asked me, um, was there a moment that I truly doubted myself and how did I overcome it? I doubt myself every day. You can kind of look at it analytically and be like, I'm not a fuck up, right? I just maybe fucked up this particular thing, but that doesn't define me. So I do this thing where I go, look, tonight I eat ice cream, I stay in bed, I, you know, I turn into like my emo teenage self and I have at it. And then tomorrow morning I wake up and we start fresh and we let it go. And sometimes when I like allow myself to indulge things a little bit, like it just, like it's like a good cry and it's like done. Now we're moving on to the next phase.